Welcome back to the final day of this truck cap campers construction. Now, if you missed the first few days, I'm gonna give you a link right here. You can go check them out there first and then come back to this one. But in those last few days, what we completed was the bed structure. We made the drawer system. We topped off that bed structure and added some supports. Today, we are gonna make a whole new structure to this build and it's gonna kinda be like a cabinet. So let me just get rid of everything else here so we can focus on the cabinet. So this cabinet's gonna be a bit slimmer than the bed because I do want that open floor. This is gonna allow me to access these two ports of the cabinet. So we're gonna have a storage in the back of it and we're also gonna have a long storage along the side. Uh, now flipping over to the front, there's gonna be two different storages here. There's gonna be a cabinet that I can open, and below that is gonna be a small drawer. This is a very useful thing to have in the truck, and let's jump into how I constructed it. For starters, we need to make the backboard, and to do that, we have to cut around the wheel well to maximize our space usage. So what I did is I took a piece of cardboard, cut around the wheel well so I had an exact dimension of what it was, traced that onto the board, and then simply cut it out so it was a perfect fit. Took that board, and then I made a top to it as well. Now, just like the bed structure, I used a similar method to cut out all the different dimensions so this would slide onto the truck perfectly. And then I screwed those in place to make them one. So I'll take that out of the truck and use it as the framing to build everything else off of. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut out all the boards that we need and we are gonna segment each storage compartment so this is gonna be easier to visualize. Did my measurements, cut those out, and this is kind of what we started with where we have these two divisions of the side storages and now I just need one more right in the middle here. So cut that out, installed it, and this is kind of what we're looking at. It looks like a TV stand in a sense and this is missing the front section so I'm going to Cut that out next, but I just want to give you an idea of what these storage compartments look like on the inside. And you can see how we built around that wheel well, so we're not losing very much space here. Next, let's get going on this front storage. So I just went over to that website that I mentioned in the second video, got the dimensions I needed for the bottom drawer, found some scrap wood that I could use, and then uh, cut that into shape, and we were ready to build that box. I also cut out the front of the cabinet, so I'm just going to put that in right here and we're going to have it on hinges so I can just swing it open. Let's move on. Let's cut out that front panel. And for this one, it's a little unique, so I have to cut out windows within this front face itself. And the way I went about doing this, because I don't have a jigsaw, is and I drilled a one inch holes in the corners of them. And then I took my circular saw and I just eased it onto that line and then cut what I could out without going too far. Um, basically, I just tried to connect these dots. And so I did that for all of them, finished it up with a saw, and this is the finished product. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out using the tools that I did. Uh, but we can see these edges are extremely rough, um, so we need to fix that up. And of course, the way you go about doing that is just sand like crazy. So you definitely want to make sure you sand those over well. And in the end, they turned out great. They're smooth to the touch. There, so the last things we need to do is install that cabinet. Drill some holes for access. And that is gonna complete it. The only thing we'd have to do now is screw in our face, but we are gonna do that very last. And move on to the next day where we're gonna do some standing. So today is finally the day that I am going to stain this project. Yesterday I did, oh, heater's turning on. Hold on. So yesterday I did one of the last major cuts I needed to do. We have the cabinet all finished up and this is what I plan to stain today. Here's what I selected to use. We have a pre-stain, a wood finish. I decided on natural because I want to keep this structure light. Now, personally, I like dark furniture. I think it looks better, but 
the truck cap is such a closed space that we want to let light in. So having a brighter wood is going to basically make the whole inside of that truck a little bit brighter. And so that's what I was going for here. And then of course, pre-stain and wood finish, they're not protecting it. So we do need some sort of coating over the top of it. I decided to use spray lacquer, uh, which is really easy to use, but uh, it's not cheap. I think I used four or five cans of this and they're like 10 bucks a piece. So we gotta start off with two things. First off, we gotta clean this place. And second, we have to sand. Actually, let's reverse that. Let's sand and then clean up the place. Because there's so much snow right now, I'm actually going to try to do this inside. And that way I can have the heater on in the back to keep it at 60. Which is going to help these stains dry. Get that stain on there. For starters, we're going to put one coat of pre-stain down. And then after that dries, we're going to follow it up with two coats of natural stain. I just followed the directions on the back based on dry times and I try to do this in a warm environment. So I'm wearing that gas mask so I can keep the garage door shut and we can keep things at 60. But I also have to do everything in the back of the truck. That's a little more difficult. The drying time definitely was much longer. Uh, so I would do that at different increments. All right, I got the first two coats on. Oh, I'll take that off for a minute. I got that one pre-coat and then one coat of natural wood stain. I really like the look of it. It didn't darken it too much. It just kind of brought out some definition in it. I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go over the top with some lacquer. Okay, so today is officially, or at least hopefully officially going to be the last day of this build. Now I've allowed the stain I put on to cure for about 24 hours. The next step is going to be to put a protectant sealant on there and I decided to use lacquer. Now what I'm going to do is I have four cans of lacquer. I am going to start at the beginning surface and spray about six to eight inches away until I finish every surface that I have and at which point I'm going to go right back to the start, add a second coat and do that till I run out of my four cans. Now, maybe that's not going to be enough coats that I'm looking for, but I can go back later, apply more lacquer. Not a big deal. So, with that said, let's get started. In the end, I ended up putting about four to five coats over every surface. I started to run out, so I opted to put that fifth coat on surfaces I was going to use the most, such as the floor that I'll be walking on all the time. But here's the final product. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It kept it nice and light, but darkened it just a little bit and brought out that definition of the wood. It wasn't really super glossy, but it did reflect a little bit of light and I kind of liked it actually. So I was happy with that selection. Of course, you could do all kinds of stuff with this. You know, you don't have to use natural. If you want that darker look, go for it. Man, what a build it's been. Um... I guess I'm just gonna finish it up. I got a couple holes to drill and I'm going to screw in this unit right here. This is our completed truck cap camper build. This was an awesome project to take on and I cannot tell you how much use I have got from this. It is just so nice. One of the greatest things about it is I can fish until dark and then drive out wherever I decide to camp, 
open the back and hop in and my campsite is made. If you guys do love camping and traveling like I do, I just can't recommend this enough. I hope you find some use of this and build your own truck cap camper. If you guys wanna see a more detailed look at the finished product once I get a mattress in there and it's a little more lived in, then you can go check out this video right here where I did an in-depth review. And in a couple months, once I hit that one year mark, I am gonna be doing a review of all the things I'd wanna change, some of the things I would have added, things I like about it, things I don't like. So we're gonna be doing that pretty soon. So make sure you go down below and subscribe if you wanna see more of this truck cap camper in action and hit that like button if you enjoyed this series. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you out there in the truck cap camper.